Greetings to you all. Um, in terms of the abstract, uh, I, I, I wrote it, um, but it was about two months ago, and so I, I had to check to make sure that, rather like in an exam, you better answer the right question. So I, 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 I was checking to ensure that I was going to speak to the right topic. Um, and it's about public transport, and it's about Auckland, uh, the, the recent history of public transport, and the not so recent history of public transport in Auckland. Um, we are going through a, a time of significant change, transition in Auckland that has a quantitative aspect and a qualitative aspect. Um, a lot of that change um, can be seen in terms of improvements to public transport and also the way that we um, promote and capitalise on Auckland's remarkable harbour and waterfront. Um, these, this period of change relates uh, very much to, but not entirely to, uh, the local government, the major local government changes, historic changes, uh, profound um, and major uh, changes to local government. Uh, and they also uh, do relate to the Rugby World Cup. Um, the Rugby World Cup has been a, a, a major influence on focusing Auckland to make improvements to the city's facilities and amenity. And I, I guess it's rather like, um, you know, a guest coming. Uh, the mother-in-law, the proverbial mother-in-law, for instance, is coming around to the house. And so suddenly a lot of things that uh, should have been done years ago are being done. And probably not for the best reasons, but that they are being done is, is a jolly good idea. Now, Auckland has an extremely poor reputation in terms of public transport. And um, it was common wisdom, common wisdom that Aucklanders have a love affair with, with the, the private motor car. Um, uh, and uh, the conventional wisdom was you'll never get Aucklanders out of their cars. And, you know, when you look at Auckland and look at its history, there, the, there's a theory that could, could justify um, that conventional wisdom. Auckland, Auckland, unlike the other cities of New Zealand, was not a planned um, settlement, uh, unlike Wellington, Christchurch and Dunedin. It has always been a, a freewheeling, individualistic, uh, mercantile city. Uh, which has constantly exceeded its carrying capacity. In the 19th and for most of the 20th century, that ca carrying capacity um, related to the provision of, of water and, and treatment of wastewater. Um, uh, but, but in relation to transport, that theory about the individualistic Aucklander and naturally would gravita gravitate to a motor car, and that's why we've got uh, congestion and traffic chaos would be wrong, would be wrong. Actually, until uh, about 1956, to be precise, Auckland was one of the best public transport cities in the world. Uh, Auckland was extremely well provided with a, an electric tramway. And uh, presently, we are extremely proud of um, major increases in public transport patronage in Auckland. Our population is 1.4 million, and we have, uh, at the end of July, 66 million passenger trips per year. And we are extremely proud of that because that's the best it's been since 1956. But in 1956, we had uh, over 100 passenger trips per year, and our population was about 350,000. And so what happened in 1956? Uh, 1956 uh, was, the, was the year in which 72 kilometres of electric tramway wasn't just covered over or, or terminated or, or desisted. It was absolutely ripped out, and that would have cost a lot of money at the time. It was a culmination of a number of decisions taken in Auckland after the war, um, and they go back to the early 50s. 
Going back to 1929, the uh, Auckland Railway Station was moved from Queen Street to its, um, the old Auckland Railway Station was moved from Queen Street uh, to uh, a Beach Road. Um, now, there's been some criticism of that step by the City Fathers of 1929, but no, it was a, a, a coherent, sensible decision because it was based on a, an underground rail link, um, which never happened. Um, it was planned for, it was discussed in the 1920s. Um, the war came, of course, the, the Depression and then the war. And of course, we need to realise that New Zealand made an enormous effort in World War II, both in the field in North Africa and at, on the home front. And the economic um, productivity during that time was quite remarkable. New Zealand was a, uh, a net donor both to the United Kingdom and to the United States. Um, but that all meant that certain city infrastructure was not proceeded with. Um, and so New Zealand has just made, made a considerable sacrifice. But coming back to the um, rail system, uh, the Ministry of Works started work on plans after the war for an, to continue that underground rail link. Um, in the early 1950s, uh, with a new government, national government, um, the, a, 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 there was a major change in the way not just the National Party thought, but I guess most people thought that in a world um, with seemingly unlimited uh, petrol resources that um, the, the, the private motor car and motorways and suburbia was the way to go. That was the American way, especially on the West Coast, and that was the way that the City Fathers felt that Auckland should go. And so um, Auckland became an extreme case. Uh, first of all, the, the City Council and the government agreed to, to ditch the underground rail link um, and electrification. Um, Wellington had electrified at that time, Melbourne had electrified in the 1920s, but in Auckland they decided, forget all about that, um, let's go for motorways, and of course, uh, we won't forget about public transport, you can put buses on the motorway, so you can kill two birds with one stone, forget about rail, um, and, and, and that's what, exactly what they did. Of course, not many other cities went totally for motorways, all cities went for motorways, but not many were foolish enough to ditch their rail um, system and their tramways in, in place of motorways. They had both options. But um, in Auckland, the, it, being an extreme case, um, they re, re, not only did they stop rail in effect, but they went after the tramway, which was extremely popular, liked by the ordinary residents of Auckland. And um, as I said, they spent a lot of money to... to um, to destroy it, in effect. So what happened? The, rail pat the public transport patronage, um, even though trams were to be replaced by buses, collapsed imme immediately. Immediately, so from 100 uh, million passengers per year, we went down to about 58. We've only gone past that in the last couple of years, 58 million per year. Um, uh, it soon became apparent, very, very soon, by the early 60s to mid-60s, that this was not a good decision. And Dovemeyer Robinson, um, of course, came up with a proposal. The ARA, New Zealand Rail, um, worked on it, but it was Robbie that fronted it, and it was for uh, a return to the, the Underground Rail um, original plans from, from the station at, at Beach Road, um, a station down where Britomart is now, I, I guess, and linking up with the Western Line. Um, uh, unfortunately, um, even though it, it received uh, approval at the highest level, uh, it wasn't proceeded with either. 